Welcome one and all to Umami Manga. I'm Petter and this is James. Hello! And today we are talking about Volume 6 of Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm sick. I've been sick for like over two weeks. <laughs> so I'm so sorry if I'm sounding strange today, if I've been sounding strange for the past two or so episodes, or actually maybe the episodes are coming out in a different order than we're releasing them. But anyway, apologies for that. Um, How dare. Anyway, <laughs> enough about that. This volume... This volume was a fun action piece. Yeah. Uh, overall, yeah. I think. Like, I think it definitely gave us, in my opinion at least, a really entertaining and and very well-paced fight with this uh, mm. forest spirit, cursed sport forest mm-hmm. spirit, Hanami. Uh, which was basically what this book was about. It was about this fight, the fight with that curse. Yeah. Yeah, It it's incredibly short. I, I was so surprised. Well, I mean, it, I was going through the chapters... And then it came to the last chapter. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Surely that was enough to fill the volume, but it is because I'm, I'm reading on the Shonen Jump app. Mm. So it's funny to think that uh, I don't know how many episodes this was in the anime, but it's, it's, I don't know. It's interesting to, or what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that there's so much fighting in here that it goes by so quickly. Mm, uh, for sure. That you are left wanting more. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely has me excited for the next volume. Exactly. I, excited for the next volume. And uh, I, I think that the fighting, the fights themselves were very satisfying. Absolutely. Uh, and I think another thing that this volume really also did to me was, I guess it um, made me even more look forward to watching the anime once we're done with uh, this part yes. of the manga that that is covered in the first season of the anime. <laughs> so excited mm-hmm. for that. <laughs> um, so yes, let us get into the character discussions then, starting with Yuji Itadori. It looks like even he is starting to view Toto as a best friend now. <laughs> Which I didn't see that coming. I wasn't expecting him to, to take so kindly, I guess, to Toto, especially this quickly, kind of. Is this a Stockholm syndrome situation? <laughs> I don't know. Oh no, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, it's honestly, I love this this I guess bromance that's forming between Yuji and Toto right now, uh, and mm. I, I'm I'm absolutely loving to see this and and to watch them uh, interact and fight together and everything. Yeah, it it's an interesting way of going about the main character getting a another teacher or learning from someone mm. you know you don't really see a time where you have like this bromance and the the senpai or the aniki or whatever mm-hmm. teaches the, the younger <laughs> one um yeah so it's kind of funny to see jesus kaisen taking it in this manner and yeah i mean it, it's really cool and i think yuji uh really has shown improvement skill wise i mean even gojo makes a uh a comment about that right and uh, he learned a new technique exactly yes the black flash which I, I will say i'm slightly torn about some of the aspects surrounding that whole part right now actually mm. uh, it's a really mm. cool like uh, as as always like i think gege akutami manages to come up with pretty interesting gimmicks for the various powers um, yeah. Like that's something we talked about, and I think this is another cool uh, thing. But the fact that Yuji learns it so fast and is able to pull it off, like what, what we see him use it like five <laughs> times or something like that, uh, which uh-huh. is like unheard of in the ju- in the, the guys in world. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and all within the same day, and like he's able to pretty much use it at will without fail uh, by the end of that, which is so uh, they, like yeah as we said like uh, because it's so like no no one is able to do that and he he's able to learn it in a couple minutes or i don't know like i don't know exactly how much time passes but like really really quickly that has me a bit skeptical about like is this really good storytelling sort of i guess me <laughs> asking that is this a, a gary Stu kind of deal or mm. is are we going to get a good reason as to why he's able to do this while everyone else struggles with it? Like maybe there is a good reason for it that we don't know of yet. I kind of hope so, but I'm really unsure. Yeah. It's it's a good question. I think it, it definitely has to do with 
probably his ability from from the very beginning where he was you know pun- you know that that skill he had where he punched with physical and then he punched with the curse power right i think that was unique to him but i guess it was so similar to this black flash thing that it made sense for him to move on to that maybe That's so in that fair. sense it, it it maybe is more natural for him mm. um, now i'm not exactly sure uh why he he's like that it could definitely be because of uh Sukuna that's inside of him or or I don't know, but mm. um regardless, yeah, he he does pull it off naturally. And I do agree that it does seem, you know, uh maybe a little uh, Gary Gary Stewish and uh convenient for <laughs> you know, a little quick. But yeah. you know, yeah, I mean this is not, this is not the first instance of that. Um I mean, basically, Toto comes in and he totally flips on its head uh, Yuji's power, you know? <laughs> yeah. It kind of changes the whole dynamic of it. So I, I guess you could argue that it was leading up to something like this since That's Toto fair. came in. True, true. Uh, and yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, it's true. There are definitely some things that we can speculate about being the reason for this, the, the fact that he has such an easy time with it. So. I guess it's not necessarily terrible. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be too quick to, I don't know. to judge it, perhaps. I, mean, but, I don't know. But, I mean, yeah, Yuji is a special guy. I mean, he was able to eat Sukuna's finger. <laughs> like, already that was something that is, like, super rare. So, right. he is a special dude. <laughs> but uh, toward the beginning of, of his fight with Hanami in this book here, uh, Yuji is driven by anger at first. And we mm. see Junpei's death flash before uh, Yuji's eyes. Yeah. Uh, which was very sad, of course. Man. And, and you know, that, that, that just causes Yuji to, to mess up because he's just too kind of blinded by that anger. After which Toto kind of teaches him a little lesson about all of that and he helps him focus. Is it really, y- Yuji has learned so much from Toto during this event. Like, it's... Like, in the previous book and in this book combined, it's, like, an incredible amount of things that he has learned from Toto. <laughs> right. Like you said, it's it's pretty quick. It's remarkably quick how <laughs> it, it just picks up on it. Or yeah. not just picks up on it, just the process of teaching is it was really, really quick. Yeah, he just he slaps him on the cheek once, and then he gives a lesson, and then he slaps <laughs> him on the cheek again. And actually, I liked the second slap because... Uh, on that panel when he slaps him the second time both Toto and Yuji are smiling <laughs> like in, in the middle of the slap I love that <laughs> you know to its credit I'm glad that we're not you know lingering on a long training arc of any kind or things like you know what I mean mm, that's like, fair. There, there is some there is some good to be gained from having a you know training arc or you know watching the character grow in that way but getting quickly to the point is not necessarily bad either absolutely so, no yeah. that, that 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 is a good I, I, point it's kind of fresh in this genre especially yeah one other thing i'll mention about the training is some of some of that could have happened off screen as well like mm. before toto and yuji got to Han- hanami they they could have been learning about the black fist or or yuji black could have flash. been learning about that black flash excuse mm-hmm. me Black Flash, so I I don't know. Like, it, granted, that still would have been quick, but maybe it would explain it a little bit more. Right. Then next, let us talk about Aoi Todo. He seemed really hard on Yuji at the beginning of the fight with uh, with Hanami there, where he he said he would literally just stand and watch and and, and like to, to to watch Yuji die if he couldn't use the Black Flash, which I was like, okay. Where I guess I wasn't necessarily surprised by it, but it was definitely still something I thought of. Okay, that's really kind of maybe a bit too much, um, I thought. Hmm. But then I thought of it as less of him being hard on Yuji and more of him just genuinely believing that Yuji could do it. Hmm. I think it's more more so that, uh, yeah. which I think is really nice. I mean, sure, it, he has a, a demeanor and kind of a an act that he puts on that is definitely kind of a hard guy, tough guy kind of thing. But really, he is such a genuinely nice guy, I think. I, I think, at this point, I'm really, really starting to like this guy. Yeah. Like, really, it, yeah. it took a while, but by now, I really like Toto. 
um, I I don't. He's not a bad guy. I don't think that at all. But <laughs> his quirky personality is just is still a little much for me. Um, I love it. <laughs> it's definitely it's definitely a a fun character. Um, in especially in this volume, you get a few moments where he he's doing his clapping thing and he's making some pretty hilarious faces as he does it. Mm. Uh, but I, I I don't know something about his obsessiveness also kind of bothers me but <laughs> i mean i think i think that makes him such an endearing character like we had I, well, I think it was in That's the previous fair. volume we had he like we got to see his whole like mind make up this whole idea of him and yuji being best friends and having this whole right, history right. together which is which, which was so <laughs> much fun and in this volume we got a little bit of a similar thing when he was about to get attacked by those buds and we see mm-hmm. in his mind how he has this scene with his idol, with his idol, and he's able to. Well, which in itself was, I, I thought, really funny and really, really like a, a great, <laughs> yeah. a great part of the chapter. But it, it, it yeah. also shows that he's really smart. Like he through through that scene in his head, he was able to figure out a way to to get around that attack and to or to, to dodge that attack. Was it 30, 32,000 IQ or something like that? <laughs> yeah. I can't remember exactly. But. Yeah, he he's definitely full of himself. But man, I I, I really really yeah. like this guy. I think that's the other that, that's the other part of it. But <laughs> you know, uh, at the end of the day, he means well. Uh, about that moment where he goes into his mind palace or his mind classroom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the page itself kind of changes the background. It goes to cherries or something like that. <laughs> it, I don't know if you noticed that, mm-hmm. but it's 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 quite quite funny it's very it's almost poetic <laughs> <laughs> uh, no i think he's he's becoming one of my favorite characters honestly <laughs> i didn't think i'd ever, ever say this before this volume i think <laughs> i think there's a fair amount of people who really enjoy toto mm. and i don't i don't hate him but it, it is one of those one of the things where it's like yeah you know if it were me i'd, I'd be maybe a little bit annoyed but <laughs> <laughs> that's fine yeah um, we also get to see Toto's cursed technique in action a lot more in this volume, uh, which I think is really awesome. Boogie woogie. Why is it called? Yeah. Why is it called boogie woogie? I don't know. But that's another. Th- just those random things that I really like about it's this just... character. So so strange. Boogie woogie. Uh, but I I I love to see like a lot of the creative ways that he uses it here. Um, yeah. Definitely a lot of fun. Like, because we had only seen it in use, I think, once before this volume started, and it was, mm. like, yeah, we didn't know much of the details exactly. around it. But right. Um, right. But now we, yeah, we really get to see it shine. And I actually, I like the fact that there was a part where he explained uh, that how how part of the the curse technique works to Hanami, uh, which definitely feels like a bit of a trope in shonen like this, where characters will. After they or before they use their special powers, they will explain the gimmicks behind them, kind of <laughs> mostly for the viewers. But it also like when you think about it, it's kind of dumb to reveal your your secrets and stuff like that. Uh, in, in in most cases, however, I think in this case there's reason for it because he he gives him only part of the um, like the secrets, quote unquote, in, yeah. in in order to confuse the guy or in order to to get like a, an upper hand later, which I think is. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a fresh take on this whole trope, I, I guess you could call it. Um, and actually, there was a similar part even earlier when Hanami did the same thing when he used the buds on Megumi and Maki, where he mm. he he told them that they feed on the cursed energy, and that and then I think I believe Megumi was like, "Thank you for revealing that" or something. But Hanami said that it it usually has a good effect when I when I say that. Probably because it may, maybe it scares people into producing more cursed energy or something like that. Um, so like it, that, that that was another situation where revealing the gimmick could have had a a, a positive uh, outcome for the user. Yeah, it's re- yeah, really clever that way. I I, I like that. Mm-hmm. I'll admit when I first saw Boogie Woogie, well when I first heard it, I was like, really? That's what's called. Um, and then. When I saw the clapping and the, I was like, "That's it, that's his, that's his curse power." <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I was, I guess I could say I was a little disappointed. But then you see the fight, and mm. it's pretty cool how it goes down. And it, 
it's really creative, and I and I appreciate that as always. You know, Jutsu Kaisen has a lot of incredible powers, as we said, and this is definitely one of those unique ones. Yeah. Uh, I think my favorite moment is when he transports or or switches places with the the cursed weapon. Oh yeah. And and Yuji. Uh, I, I remember when I first saw that, I I wasn't expecting that, and mm. thought it was really a cool a cool way to. Uh, as you were saying, you know, tell the truth to the enemy, but not tell the whole truth. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was, yeah, it was pretty great. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I think one of the main things uh, that I'm excited for in terms of watching the enemy eventually is this fight, like when he uses his, his cursed technique, uh, like hmm. th- that part of the fight, I'm so stoked to see animated. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, Spoilers! It's really good, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. especially if you like Toto. If you if you really like Toto, <laughs> yeah, yeah. then I think you'll you'll love that. <laughs> Can't wait. And it's not too much longer, I believe. I think, at least from what I've heard, anime season one stretches up until a couple chapters into volume eight. So there's only one whole volume oh. and a little le- little more left. Uh, at least based on my understanding. Really? Mm. I guess I could see that. <laughs> So that's very exciting. Hmm. But is there anything else on Toto? Who is that mysterious lady from his childhood? I'm quite Oh yeah. Curious about that. Right. Yeah, the lady who gave him the idea to ask that question. <laughs> right. Whenever he exactly. meets new people. <laughs> Seems to be his uh, his his master, his inspiration. So True, true. I, I assume that's not gonna be just left untouched. I, I wonder if we'll yeah. get get more on that. Definitely hope we will. Then next, let's talk a bit about Noritoshi Kamo. Uh, we find out that he is something like a bastard son or something like that to the head of the Noritoshi family. And um, that the only reason why he is the heir is because the rightful wife never gave birth to any son possessing a cursed technique. Which is kind of sexist, mm. I guess, first of all, uh, that only sons are counted into that. But I guess it's also part of that whole that that world or whatever or a lot of those upper class or o- old-fashioned things yeah definitely a patriarch right for sure. uh-huh. Patri- patriarchal ever right uh but it was interesting to see to find out about that i think or i mean we he's still not like a character that we know too much about necessarily but um at least i i did enjoy getting that brief piece of backstory as to like how he definitely cares a lot about his mother and she hasn't been treated well a lot of, like for a lot of his life at least like based on his perception and and uh, and now he he does what he thinks will protect her by playing the part of the heir to the Kamo family and and right now he thinks mm. that part involves killing Yuji. Mm. So it was pretty interesting that he or I guess to find out that he is actually willingly killing Yuji like even if the headmaster hadn't given that order Mm-hmm. Noritoshi would have probably still wanted to do that it seems like or at least he would have chosen to do that based on being the heir to the Kamo family at least that's kind of the vibes that I was getting from that monologue of his or that thought monologue of his being that I don't know if he I don't know if he's necessarily if he necessarily like wants to kill Yuji like himself like out of his own will necessarily but that it's rather, it's something that he is expected to do as the heir of the Kamo family. Yeah. And he yeah. has to, I guess, fulfill all of those duties in order to keep his mother safe. That's kind of how I read it right now. Yeah, I think that's a, a fair way to read it. Hmm. You know, at the end of the day, I think he, he is doing it for his mother. But, uh, you know, that it also could be that he it generally feels that Yuji could be a threat, and as the head of the Kamo family, or a potential head, he needs to set an example. Mm. Um, there could also be that, but yeah. no, I, I agree with you, though, for sure. Right, right. So, yeah, this is definitely a guy I look forward to seeing more of. And, and also, interestingly enough, like, like or, or I guess he is one of the examples, or I guess I should say he and um, Megumi and Inumaki are are an example in this volume of characters from different schools who were fighting each other pretty brutally for some time suddenly 
becoming allies in a sense once the big threat appeared. Um, so I, I thought I, I enjoyed seeing him work together with Fushiguro and Inumaki. And, and, and to see that that actually worked. It was actually functional. He's not a terrible person. He's not like unwilling to like work with the other good guys or anything like that. He's, he's not a bad right. guy. He's maybe just misguided to a degree. Hmm. Well, yeah, right now their their goals do not align. Uh, For sure. Well, I mean, before, <laughs> I guess I should say, at the beginning of this volume, they did not align. Um, but uh, when the Hanami comes in, it's like, okay, <laughs> change of plans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, yeah, so for sure, they're, they're really fighting on the same team. It's just, you know, two divisions have different ways of going about it. <laughs> for sure. Interesting to say that he believes him and Fushiguro are the same. Right, um, exactly. I don't know. It, it maybe he has something there. It, it, I guess really goes comes down to the family situation, I suppose. But uh, I, I don't know if I call he, Kamo and Fushiguro the same, especially in the choices and decisions they make. Yeah. I, I feel like Fushiguro is, is a lot more uh, picky about the choices he makes, I guess you could say. It, it's, not so, it's not so black and white. Uh, right. Uh, yes, definitely. You know, I think he really, he, he goes by his conscience. Precisely. Let's talk a bit about Megumi Fushiguro next, actually. Mm-hmm. He says that he no longer has a connection to the Zenin family, implying that he used mm. to, supposedly, mm. have a connection to them. And I mean, we, we know that there has been something about, like, the Fushiguro family and the Zenin family, that there, there is some kind of tie. Uh, it's all still quite mysterious, though, I think, exactly mm. how that connection exists or has existed and why there is no connection anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I on, I don't really have much of a speculation or anything like that, but it's something that I'm really <laughs> really curious to find out more about. And I think that's that goes to what Kama's saying when they're the same. I, I think yeah, they must have a similar situation. Yeah, exactly. Somehow, by the way, I thought that was funny when he he said that uh, that we're the same, and Megumi was like, "No, we're not." And Noritoshi was like, "Yes, we are." And Megumi was like, "No, we're not." <laughs> like, my God, guys, guys, come on, like, you're adults, kind of. Or I guess maybe they're not adults technically. But anyway, yeah, it just felt like such a childish thing to do. Like, no, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> um. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that that is an interesting point, and th- there's so much mis- mystery surrounding uh, Megumi right now that it's. Mm. It's exciting to see how how that would unfold. Uh, I mean, really. Let's not forget that Sukuna himself is very interested in this in this boy. Precisely. We still are not quite sure why per se. Yeah, man. I love the line that let's agree to curse each other. I thought that was. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of edgy, but definitely I, I think it's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. I like it. But then, uh, Nue the the bird falcon thing that he had it, i think it died yeah i, I was that's, that's a little a unsure but yeah i think it did too so, yeah. I, I i'm not i'm not exactly sure either but i i think it may have mm-hmm. um uh, yeah i'm afraid but it, apparently we learned that a new power or a, a part of his power is that the rest of the curses that he has ends up gaining power for the ones that pass away precisely which is really cool yeah, again, just so many cool <laughs> ideas for these powers. Yeah, like, I I just uh, floored really, Honestly. I really am, and that's not even that's not even the strangest slash coolest power I or like one I didn't see coming. We'll get to that later, <laughs> but uh, I mean, yeah, it's really it's really neat. I think absolutely, yeah, I like seeing the wolves combined into one big wolf. Hmm. That was awesome. I wonder what would happen if. They all died except for one. Oh yeah. Would that be a, just a stronger, like, ideal curse to have? Uh, yeah. I don't know. And then what happens when they all die? Like, 
Yeah. Do they come back again or do you have to redo the bonding or something? I don't know. Anyway. Right. Speculation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, this is a good question though. Is there anything else anything else on Mega Me? No. And next up, let's talk a little bit about Nobara Kugisaki. I don't have much on her or really I don't have, I don't have much on <laughs> basically anyone else, honestly, but but I, I thought it was nice to see her cooperate with Mai now, even though they are they are bickering for sure. Uh, <laughs> but like it's another example of well yeah, people who had fought each other pretty recklessly or, or brutally in the event and that are now mm. joining forces against the curses. And it's nice to see that it works. You know, it can it can be done. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But uh, anything else on her? No, no, not really. <laughs> Alrighty, then uh, let's move on to Satoru Gojo. Guys, so OP, they have to do everything they can to make sure he doesn't fight. <laughs> exactly, he and only he. <laughs> that was that was definitely an interesting thing. But uh, are we supposed to take it as like that that he was the one who broke the curtain effect? By the way, I, I, I assume know. so, but. I'm not quite sure either. Yeah, it was a bit unclear, but like I feel like that makes the most sense that he somehow was able to, after some time, was able to uh, tear it down somehow. Mm. Especially since he was like right there in the sky when the curtain came down. The curses seemed to to know that there would be a time limit. Maybe they were a little bit surprised of how quick it was. So maybe it yeah. was Gojo who undid it. Mm-hmm. I can't. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. They honest, they said something remember. like, "Oh, it hasn't even been thirty minutes yet." I, or I think the the, yeah. the guy said that. Um. So it definitely seemed like it came down sooner than expected for for them for the bad guys. Yeah. But anyway, that's uh, that's. I mean, with with Gojo, we we got to see his purple laser blast or whatever that was. Just yeah. Annihilate everything. That was crazy. I think he even said so. Like, let's go a little crazy or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. He he supposedly exercised Hanami in one fell swoop, but as Toto remarked, like, one can't really tell if Hanami was exercised. I mean, he probably was, because mm-hmm. it was Gojo who did this, and he is incredibly powerful, as we know. Leave like powerful to the point where he didn't even leave a trace. Um, so yeah, yeah, Hanami's probably dead or exercised, but still, I guess we can't know for sure, for sure, since yeah, as Toto said, right, right. But I mean, I you know, it it gotta be surprising if it didn't at least get harmed in some way. Oh, from that. definitely. <laughs> that, that, that oof. Was there anything else on Gojo? No. Then. A little bit on principal Gaku Ganji. Bro. <laughs> His curse technique is being an amp for a, an electric guitar. <laughs> I thought that what? was so <laughs> funny. <coughs> it totally just breaks the stereotype of, you know, old man like being, you know, a master swordsman or a martial artist or right. you know, so- something like that is typical. Mm-hmm. No, the man is like electric guitar, hev- <laughs> heavy metal. Uh, uh. You know, he himself is the amp. Yes. Like, I, I, it, that is so brilliant. Like something that totally <laughs> caught me off guard when I first saw it. Oh yes, and same. I, I think it, it really changed my opinion on the character. <laughs> yeah. As well. Uh, yeah, I think. I mean, my my opinion on on the character changed in this volume partially for this reason, but also he seemed really keen on saving the kids, which yeah, yeah. Which I think is a good a good trait, which I hadn't necessarily expected from him prior. Sure, he's he probably still wants Yuji dead, so at least, like it's not mm-hmm. like I love the guy, but no, yeah. but I definitely have a better view of him now than I did before this volume. Yeah, I yep, I agree. I'm I'm not terrified of him anymore. <laughs> I guess I was a bit scared of him before. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. I I I think I feel or have had the same sort of relief. Mm. When I saw that power and saw who, I mean, I was like, whoa, this is so cool. Yeah. But also, like, okay, can this guy really be a bad guy or like a villain? Right, uh, exactly. <laughs> if, this, if this is who he is, and, he, and like you said, he's so concerned about, you know, saving everybody and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I, 
I think I had a similar change in in thought about him uh-huh. <laughs> when, I, when I first saw this. Great. Next, I'd like to talk a bit about this man called Juzel. Mm. A creepy a weirdo. dude. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely a weirdo who makes tools out of human body parts. <laughs> uh that de- definitely fitting for this story i think like it's definitely something that fits yeah. within this this plot and he doesn't really have much of a long-lived career here it seems no. like uh, goju breaks his arms and his legs um it's so sudden <laughs> but i do expect we'll see him a little bit more uh like in like since he is supposed to be questioned and i expect to maybe see some of that mm-hmm. so maybe we'll yeah maybe there's still a bit more that we'll get from this character. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I, just real quick, it's interesting that we have these curse users on the curse's side, yeah. besides just Ghetto. Precisely. Uh, yeah, that that's really interesting to find out. Yeah. I don't know. Besides them just being quirky and, and very eccentric, I don't know why they, or how they were recruited, but... I mean, look, mm. a guy who wants to make humans and, or people into furniture, at, mm. you know, probably uh, would jump the opportunity <laughs> when given it. So That's true. Uh, but there's another curse user here. I, I forget. Did he even have a name? I don't think he was given uh, a name. Like yeah. the guy who was fighting Utahime very, very briefly, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's not, I mean... He, I mean, he, he's a little weird because he has the sword with the hand. Yeah, that's definitely Even creepy. I think, is Juzo Juzo? Uh, Juzo, is that? Uh, Juzo, yeah. He made it for him, but still, like, it doesn't, not necessarily warm feelings. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And he does seem kind of like socially, uh, maybe socially awkward is not the right word, but when, when yeah. uh, Nobara and... Um, um, not Maki. Mai. Mai. Uh, we're there. That he he got really excited and it's like, oh my gosh, we're so popular, you know. Mm, yeah. That kind of thing. So there's some there's something a little bit off putting by him, but yeah. maybe he seems a little more put together than Juzo. But... He's a different kind of crazy. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I mean, I guess we'll see. It was very his appearance was even more brief, I think, than Juzo's. And as we said, he didn't right, even get right. a name here. But I, I expect we'll see more of him, though. Yeah. Like, for sure. And then, going on with the bad guys, there was Mahito, who appeared at the very end. I mean, he also appeared in, oh, in yeah. some flashbacks, but he also appeared on the very last panel uh, of this volume, after Hanami was supposedly killed. Uh, mm-hmm. And he says, mission accomplished. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I wonder... What has he just done? Like, we see he he killed some guys there. And it looks like maybe he stole something? It's, it's mm-hmm. a bit unclear, I guess. But it looks like he's exiting some building, which I guess belongs to the to the schools. Um, and he's holding something that maybe he stole from there, potentially. But I have no clue what that, what that might be or uh, why or anything. I'm very much at a loss here, honestly. Uh, th- th- yeah. th- this volume kind of... Uh, like, it doesn't really leave us with much of a cliffhanger in terms of, like, we're being, like, in the moment in something very, like, immediate. Right. But it, th- yeah. it but it still leaves us with a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is definitely one of them with Mahito here. Like I said, it's a lot of fighting and, and, and cool cool moments, but not necessarily plot driving moments i mean yeah i mean definitely we got the end of the fight that that moves the plot but mm. we really have to wait till the next volume to see w- where it's going from here exactly because the fight is over and it doesn't really set up anything new necessarily or at least nothing yeah. concrete well besides mahito be like i did it mission Ye- accomplished <laughs> i hope that's how he sounds in the anime <laughs> it's not how he sounds <laughs> um oh by the by the way um do you have any other character you want to talk about before we move into predictions? Uh, did did we want to talk about Hanami at all? Uh, I don't have any any notes, but go for it if you have. I mean, just just a few, I don't know, a few things to talk about. Mm-hmm. Whenever we saw Hanami, the the left arm was always covered, 
Yeah. So we finally got to see that. It was interesting that it was a flower that had an eye and that it absorbs the curse energy. Right. But we, I don't, we didn't see it do anything, right? Like it, it was about to, but then Gojo came in. Exactly. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. We never actually got to see it. I, at least I don't think so, really. Like, yeah, it was so I, interrupted. So unless Hanami's dead, which is very, I mean, that's very much a possibility, uh-huh. it would be interesting to eventually see what that power is. I mean, it's kind of, it's almost like a lost potential, you know, if, uh, yeah. if, if we don't see it. But I don't know. I guess it's not that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was also interesting to see the curse's perspective, uh, perspective of going from just following orders or doing whatever to enjoying the fight, you know. True. Like we're getting a we're getting a side of these curses that maybe you wouldn't see from the unintelligent ones. You know what I mean? Definitely. Uh, it, they're more than just. I mean, they're definitely pure evil. Uh, I, I guess you could say. But Akutami is putting so much characterization into these pure purely evil monsters that I think it makes mm. them uh, more interesting to. Uh, listen to and read instead of just being oh i want to destroy the world you know definitely yeah yeah i I really agree with that and actually that was something that i thought about at some points during the battle was how we really got hanami's perspective of the battle uh in ways that yeah yeah i hadn't necessarily expected um so yeah and i think that that definitely helped with like yeah yeah making us enjoy the character uh of this curse of it a bit more than we would have otherwise. So definitely a fun villain antagonist. Absolutely. Willing to see that again, and unless Hanami's dead. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, yeah, it remains to be seen. <laughs> uh huh. Was there any anything else? Maki, I got, I got it. I got to shout out my girl Maki. Oh yes. Uh, I think she had a great moment with Fushiguro. While it pales into comparison of what Toto and Yuji were able to do against Hanami. Uh, I thought it was so cool. <laughs> For sure. Their fight. Uh, it was very flashy. And the nunchucks coming out. Oh, I don't know if you call it. You guys you can't call it a nunchuck. It's some sort of staff. But yeah. it basically acts like a nunchuck. Anyway, mm-hmm. I thought it was really cool. It was. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah. Just a lot of creativity there. And I love Maki still. Understandable. And yeah, yeah. Just great action all around. And this really, really throughout the entire volume. Well, let's talk about some predictions then. Take it away. <laughs> yeah, right. I guess it's still still for this book and maybe to a degree next as well. It's going to be mostly me. But as we kind of talked about, this book kind of ended a big fight and, as, as I said, kind of didn't really set up anything too obvious necessarily for us to speculate about. True. Um, that said, I have, I have a few little things that I, that I was... Uh, wondering about and kind of thinking about uh one of them being that i i expect to see more of this uh, or of these collaborations between the sister schools like we like like i was talking about we saw uh, nobara and mai work together in this volume and we saw well well to be fair we've seen yuji and toto they've been working since i believe the previous book even um but uh but yeah and, and then as i said also like with noritoshi and and Fushiguro working together as well. And so that's something I expect to see more of. Um, like, like sure, sure, there are some characters that want to kill Yuji, and that will be interesting to see, uh, assuming there will be more of a collaboration between the characters, between like the good characters. But ultimately, I believe that everyone at the schools will, will cooperate against the curses, more or less from now on. So that's... Mm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then, yeah, uh, just maybe a little worried about the characters who want to kill Yuji, but I, I do think ultimately it's going to work out there. And like, really, like the main threat is not going to be the good guys at the school or the whatever you want to call them. But yeah, the, the, yeah, the people at the school, but, but the curses and the people working with the curses, the, they are the, the true bad guys. And I don't think we need to worry about like Noritoshi or, or the principal of the other school too much yeah yeah and as far as like future fights with other curses go i predict that we'll see the ocean spirit curse um in like some kind of future upcoming 
major or semi-major battle. Hmm. Since we saw Jogo already in, in a fight, and here obviously we had Hanami in a pretty much the whole volume, and, but we haven't seen the ocean curse spirit guy uh, really in action so far. You're right. Uh, mm. So I expect we'll see that guy or that, that curse up next somehow, somewhere. I wonder how many curses they have on their side. Like, right. that are intelligent like themselves. Precisely. Yeah, like, uh, the only, like, the, the, the reason why, why this is the one that I'm mentioning is because it's the only one that I know for sure that they have as one of their, right. like, big guys, or, or at least those yeah. scenes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there definitely could be others. Or not. I don't, don't know. Uh, true, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe they are more limited than, than I think, or, yeah. I don't know. Hmm, hmm. But yeah, uh, definitely looking forward to reading the next book. Probably gonna try to read that immediately after this recording. Nice. I guarantee you'll you will not be able to predict what's happening next. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> yeah, that, that 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 that's really the case. I I feel really, really confused, kind of as to where the story is headed from here. Because I feel mm. like we kind of just had a pretty big climax, and. It seems like we're going to maybe slow down a little bit mm. for the next volume. At least that's how it feels right now. But, um, mm. I mean, yeah, really anything could happen. And uh, and right. also the fact that you say that I can't predict it makes me even <laughs> more interested. But I, I will say, I think with, with this volume, um, like leaving predictions and stuff aside, with this volume, I've... Uh, I think I think the series as a whole has grown for me, uh, and I think nice. like my Great. my overall view of the series has in, has increased, and and yeah, I I I'm definitely starting to like it, uh, quite a lot. So yeah, that's awesome for sure. Stoked for the next book. I think I felt similarly around this time as well. Mm. I, I mean, I was writing pretty high uh, ever since um, Junta. So, uh, but uh, but Jim, e even Jim Pei. Oh, Jim Pei. Sorry. I think I mixed up Yuta and, and Junpei. Ah, ah. Uh, although Junta is a respectable name. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, uh, I, I think yeah, the the story is um, at one of its good, good, good points. Mm. Uh, so yeah, very, very excited to keep going. Absolutely, and I believe from now on we shouldn't have any breaks that have been as long as the one was before or like between the previous one and this one so mm. hopefully that will be all good the plan has also become for us to go um with weekly releases of the podcast over the summer so we we should actually be able to catch up or or, or, or to, to make headway uh quite fast and make sure that we should actually get past what's covered in season two definitely before that season finishes so that's great for us because we probably wouldn't have been able to watch that season if <laughs> if we hadn't done that i'm uh, greatly appreciative of this as, as am i i mean i mean it was my own idea but i yeah we we are <laughs> oh i'm so great uh, I'm so my gracious. ideas are top notch um, yes. If I do say so myself, but no, no. But the plan actually is for the Umami Manga Podcast to go weekly at least during uh, June, July, August, September, and October. So for five months, we are uh, planning on going every single Friday. Can't wait. Same. It'll be, it'll be fun to binge something again. Yes, exactly. It's been a while, and we will actually be able to do that with Jujutsu Kaisen now, so I'm very stoked. Especially now that with this volume, that actually, that my, my, my excitement hope for it has, has actually increased <laughs> as well, so it's perfect timing, really. All right. Well, that brings us to the end. If you enjoy our content, you can follow us on Twitter at Umami Manga, and it would be lovely if you'd like to support us by rating our show on the podcast platforms and subscribing to our channel Umami Manga on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening. I will see you next time when we'll talk about Volume 7. Bye-bye. See you later, my best friend.
<laughs> Wait, do they actually say besto friendo in the Japanese? I think it's friendo. That's so cute. I love that. Let me see. I, I need I need to double check real quick. If they if they actually <laughs> use like the English like phrase. Uh-huh. I, I love it when they do like when Japanese uses English words. Besto friendo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He says it. <laughs> I love it. My best friend. Oh my god. Oh dude, that kind of makes me love him even more than I already did. Like no joke. I love I I love stuff like that. Uh, uh, it is pretty great. 